Hither David Singer, I, mu I must talk to you about this fabulous little film. Well, thank you very much. As I said, it is a, a sparkling diamond in the rough. You are very kind. I appreciate that. You know, it's not often I get to see a film that <laughs> takes place in a diamond district. Yes. So, you know, now your brother wrote this. No, I wrote uh, it. You wrote it. Okay. Yeah. And my brother got to kibitz on the story a little bit, but oh. I wrote the screenplay. Yeah. Okay. So now, as you were writing this, because you have... Working within an actual working jewelry store, right? Diamond diamond dealer store, actually. That's you know, were you visualizing this? How much research went into this particular a, product? A, a lot of research, actually. I had a friend who did this particular job that Cassidy does in the movie, who was a courier for a diamond importer a long time ago, and I'd always mulled over this idea. And then when it came time to make this movie. John and I went to a number of jewelers and jewelry stores and talked about how their business operates and how they actually move stones from one place to another. We wanted to create a real three-dimensional world. And fortunately for an industry that's known for being so sort of secretive and closed off, they were very open. They couldn't have been help more helpful or more friendly. And uh, it, was a great, it was a treat. I mean, that's something that really struck me because part of how I put my way through school was I managed jewelry stores oh, really? back east. And even then for retail stores, very, very secretive about buying and purchasing and stones, especially loose stones. Right. So to they see... very open, but there was a... We did end up in a locked jewelry store at midnight with a guy telling us a story he was punctuating by waving a pistol around. So... We did get to see some of the more uh, colorful sides of the business, I would say. How did you pick your locations? Because we've all seen Chicago so many times. However, we haven't seen the places that you chose as location. Well, I'm a lifelong Chicagoan, so I wanted to show the city the way that I know it, which is not the postcard view. It's the L tracks and dive bars and bowling alleys and the places that I know the real people of Chicago populate. We're fortunate that we have a very beautiful city and a very photogenic city, but I personally am more attracted to the place where these characters are more likely to have lived, so I wanted to make sure we showed that. And that's something that I really love, is that your production design, through your locations, and then the actual production design, such as in Val's apartment, you know, we really do... Your set matches the character. Thank you very much. There's a lovely woman named Audrey Sirwat, who was our production designer, who worked miracles with the $5 we had to give her to make those things look like they did. Uh, we had a very specific idea about each one of these places, and she was a master at executing it. Val's apartment, for example, was an apartment building that the mother of a kid I grew up with lived in, and I knew that we were going to make this movie. She should live in a place like that. And then we were able to scout it and luckily get lucked into having that particular place. So we got, we knew what we wanted. It helped in, in, in great detail. So did you know what you wanted with casting? Because the cast that you got is absolutely amazing. It's amazing, isn't it? That for like a first time movie maker like me, I was able to snare a bunch of talented pros like Mary Lou and Ed and Chelsea Ross and people who have a real, uh, a, a longer history than I've been alive. Uh, yes. It was, getting Mary Lou was a coup for us. We knew we wanted a Mary Lou Henner type and to get the genuine article was an incredible stroke of luck. Furthermore, Ed is, he's so good in this, playing against the type that you normally see him do. And I think that's one of the things that appealed to him about it, although you'll have to ask him, is the opportunity to do something different than he's normally known for. But he's a, a performer of great skill and depth and it's a, I'm just happy I got to be a small part of showing people what Ed can really do. Well, you know, the big question, since you have Ed on set, Mr. Environmentalist himself, what kind of carbon footprint did you have? I'll say this, that Ed didn't let us pick him up at the airport in Chicago. He took the train in and let us meet him at the train station. He didn't take a bottle of water on the set. He walked to work every day. 
I have never met anyone in my life as committed to the ideals he espouses as Ed. He is a actual inspiration. He is a person to be admired. Truly. So, so now, with this being your first feature, what did you learn about yourself in bringing this whole film to fruition and getting here to your premiere tonight? What I learned about myself? I learned that if you put your head down and do the work, it can happen. That instead of looking at it as this monolith of a thing I could never pull off, I tried to just knock down the next thing in front of me. We wrote the script, and then I raised the money, and then we cast it, and we got a crew, and then we shot it, and edited, and scored it, and took it to festivals, and uh, I learned that I will, I'm willing and able to grind away on something as long as it takes to get the result I want. And for this to be the outcome is just a, a pleasure beyond words. It really is. So now, as a director, what are you going to take forward into your next project that will perhaps make it a little easier? Uh, hopefully, somebody else's money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yes. The, uh, no, what I'm going to take forward is th that I no longer have to suspend my own disbelief about whether or not I can do it. You know, I did it once. Now I know I can do it, and now i got to do it again. Yeah. And uh, I'm champing at the bit. I'm ready to go. You know, once is not enough, David. I, <laughs> you can say that again. Congratulations. An amazing job. I love this film. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see what you do again. Yeah, me either. Oh, thank you, David. Right, cheers. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you.